Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Paul Brown Show. This evening, my guest will be Ms. Jatavia Brooms. She's the president, CEO of Prima Royal Pink Diamonds. How you doing there, ma'am? Hi, how are you doing today? All right, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, everyone, my name is Jatavia Broom, and I'm the founder, CEO, president, everything, all of that, of the Prima Royal Pink Diamonds. If you're wondering what Prima means, I am Prima, and the Royal Pink Diamonds is my dance team. A little bit about me, I've been dancing for eight years now. Um, I started dancing when I was in high school. I started as a West Charlotte Sophisticat on the marching band. And then I went off to a t North Carolina a t State University, Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. I went to a t I did cheerleading, I did dance, I did modeling. So I did a lot of things that related to the arts. After college, I went off, I did a little bit of semi-pro um, dance teams. I danced for football teams, I've danced for basketball teams, I've tried out for the Carolina Panthers, and I just, lo I just enjoy dance. Um, I love my children, and that's just what I do. I enjoy the art of being in dance and being around my kids. So I just want to do more for the community, and that's just me, Prima. That sounds very interesting, Jatavia. Jatavia? Yes. Okay. What made you interested in becoming, uh, you know, in the dance field? Well, what got me into the dance field, just to be honest, a long time ago, I had a whole bunch of things that I was dealing with. But when I tried out for a dance team, it allowed me to express myself and shut some of those things out. It brought my self-esteem up. I was able to talk more. I was able to meet new friends. So I said, hmm, this is the thing for me. And so I decided to do dance. Um, I kept on going and I tried to, I tried to do it more in college. So I decided that I wanted to bring out a dance team. Now, I was on different dance teams and then I was helping different dance teams doing coaching. I coached for high schools, I coached different community teams, mm -hmm. and I was seeing that the way that they were doing things on their teams, and I was looking and analyzing, and I thought, hmm, well, I think that I could do this a little bit better or do something a little bit different, so I decided that I wanted to start my own team and show the world that Prima can make it happen and make things a lot better for the dance world. So I brought about the Royal Pink Diamonds. So the Royal Pink Diamond, that's your baby. Mm -hmm. When was it established and what is your vision in the Royal Pink Diamond? The Royal Pink Diamonds was established in January of this year, 2017. My vision for the Royal Pink Diamonds is just for my team to become popping. I want you guys to be able to see my team Whenever they hit the door, you know exactly who my team is. Whenever we go out to perform, you know exactly who the Royal Pink Diamonds are. Whenever you see any of my Royal Pink Diamonds in class or going off to college or going off and being in these businesses, owning their own businesses, you'll know that it's a Royal Pink Diamond. My goal is to not only teach my girls how to dance, versatile, I want them to be versatile dancers, learning hip hop, ballet, African, modern, tap dance, whatever type of dance that I can think of, but not only are they dan they're dancing, they're also becoming better people, better men, better women. They're becoming better people. And I try to teach not only my, my team, but I try to teach my parent squad to have different characteristics about themselves, whether it's working on being on time all the time, okay. working on your time, or working on the way you present yourself to people, or trying to um, get people to eliminate the stereotype that they have about African-American people. I want us to dance and also be better people. So that's what the Prima Royal Pink Diamonds represent, diversity and difference. Where do you see Royal Pink Diamond in five years? I mean, because you're new, mm -hmm. you're really energized. What do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see the Royal Pink Diamonds. I see our game in lights, okay. first of all. Yeah. Um, we're getting our studio together right now. So I see our studio getting bigger. Um, right now I have 30 girls, so in five years I hope to have over 100, 100 people and more boys on the squad. Um, in five years, I want a Royal Pink Diamond to walk into any place and be able to inspire the person that they're standing beside. 
So in five years, we're not only better dancers, we're also better people. Um, in five years, the Royal Pink Diamond should be popping. We should be on TV, maybe, like Correct. one of these shows. Mm -hmm. Or we should be doing something positive for the world. We should be doing great things. Each day will be a better day for us. So we'll take it one step at a time. So we'll see where we are in five years. But right now, we're just building up. What's the age group that you currently have for your young ladies? The age group for my squad is 5 to 18. I started off in January taking only those between 7 to 18. Mm -hmm. But as we went along, I wanted to see how things would go. I took it back down, and now I'm accepting people between 5 and 18. And I accept girls and boys. Right now I have a squad full of girls, but I do want some boys involved. So I'm taking between 5 and 18 boys and girls. Okay, boys, get out there and get into this thing right here. Yes. What makes, I see you got so much energy and all that. What is it about this that really excites you? I just love working with my kids. I love dance and I just love showing people that you can be whoever that you want to be, really. Correct. Um, everybody has their own way of doing things. Some people do it with positive positivity. Some people do it with a smile. Some people do it with a frown. We only live one life, so what I've decided for myself is that I'm going to live life the best way I can, keep positive energy, mm -hmm. have my energy really, really high, hoping to inspire the next person, because you never know what people are going through. When mm -hmm. I walk into my studio, my girls always ask me, Coach Shavia, why, why don't you, you don't ever flip out on us, you don't ever yell, scream, curse, you don't ever do none of that stuff, and it's okay. because I want to show them that I, you don't have to present those sort of behaviors just to put a message out there. I don't have to scream at y'all in order for y'all to stand in attention. I don't have to beat on your heads in order for y'all to know what's right from wrong. I want to come into the room and you do what you have to do. And every time you walk into an audition, whether it's with me or anybody else, you'll be good to go. Show a positive attitude anywhere you go, whether it's on the dance floor or whether it's just walking in a place like this. Have a positive attitude okay. and be confident at what you do. Um, right now, I'm not too, too relaxed, but mm -hmm. I am trying to keep my confidence. Like I try to tell my girls, keep your confidence. If you never lose your confidence, you'll be good to go in whatever situation. So I you're stay doing confident. A, you're doing a great job, Tavia. You're doing a great job. As far as discipline, now I know this is kind of like a privilege for the young ladies to be on your dance team. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that as far as if, some, if they do something in school that, you know, or the grades not at what it should be or something? How do you handle those situations with your dance team? Well, I have a demerit system that we follow. We have a demerit system. All of my team members have received the demerit system and they've signed it to its entirety. They know that I'll be checking up on grades, checking up on attendance and all of that good stuff. Just like they're in school, they follow by those rules just to make sure everything is structured. Okay. Now, um, if they do have bad grades, which my girls know that I don't play that, mm -hmm. if they do have a grade that's not appropriate for the team, then they know that they'll have to step, take a step back. Now, I'm not saying, and I don't recommend this for any squad, if a child or a dancer does not have the correct grades that they just fall from the team or get kicked off the team. That's not my that's not my idea. What I think should happen is if they get that bad grade, I talk to them, make sure they understand how important grades are mm -hmm. and how important being a, a dancer are, how the two connect together. And if they understand that the first time, we'll move forward. Now, if something else happens the second time, if they're still acting out in school, that means that they don't care enough about what they have going on to be concerned about that consequence. Okay. So, the first time I give them a warning, the second time they know what, what's gonna happen. So, mm -hmm. on the demerit system, it outlines those consequences for them so they know exactly the next step that will happen if they do something like that. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. Um, how do you deal with the parents? I mean, I know deal. Okay, when you have your little talent, when you do dance c competition, mm -hmm. 
How do you handle that with the parents, you know, with, with their child? How do they participate or do they want their child to be in the limelight? How do you deal with that? Okay, I'm going to bring back up the demerit system. We do have a demerit system. So on the demerit system, I look at I look at how many days that they are there, uh -huh. if they're there on time, every single practice. If they're one of my kids who are absent or missing time, I'm looking at it like, okay, when it comes to, when it comes down to choosing who's going to dance and who's not going to dance, I'm looking at that. So my parents know that I'm looking at my demerit system. So if they are not following my demerit system from top to bottom, then they already know they're a little bit on the rocks. Now, as far as being in the limelight, you know, I have 30, over 30 girls. So being in the limelight, everybody can't be in the limelight. When we go to competitions, they sometimes have limits on who can perform. And when you think of it, I have 30 girls versus only, let's say 10 people can get spots on the squad. So now, as a coach, I have to go and look at their attendance, how they've been performing in school, um, if they've been tardy or not. I have to look at all types of things to determine who's going to be in the limelight. So when I'm talking to a parent and they're trying to say, well, my daughter should be in the limelight, you know parents all, are always going to say to. that. They okay. love, parents love their children and I love them too. But I explain to my parents, they know that the child has to put forth their best effort in order to get in that limelight. Mm -hmm. I have 10 slots. So in order for your dancer to stay in the limelight, they have to come to practice, show me that they're passionate, know all of the material, try not to miss it any days. And if they do, make sure they can keep up with the material. Um, they have to show me. I can teach them what they need to know, but I can't dance for them. So if you want them to be in the limelight, I need them to be able to handle dance and whatever other obligations they have. And then we can talk about the limelight. Has it become an issue yet from your parents, you know, because they want their child, according to how many kids are able to dance in a competition, if their child isn't able to, have you re gotten to that point where they kind of get upset because of that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, and how do you handle that? Yes. And uh -huh. there are many of times my parents get upset and they might always get upset with me. But I try the best I can to accommodate my group. Mm -hmm. I have, like, a, like I said before, I have over 30 people. So you can't make over 30 people happy. But what you can do is make sure that you are accommodated in all 30 to the best of your ability. So let's say, for instance, if I had one parent and they were really upset about their daughter yeah. being in the limelight. And the reason why I didn't choose this dancer is because they're not where they need to be. She uh -huh. doesn't know the material or um, she's not doing it the best of her ability or he, excuse me. They're not doing it to the best of their ability. Um, I'll let the parent watch them and ask them, what do you think? What do you think about this? Do you think that I should put them out on the court or on the field? What do you think? And the parent will give me their feedback. If it's good feedback, I'll say great. And then we'll talk about what it is that I thought it was. And then we'll move forward to how they can get in the limelight the next time. Now, for those people who I don't choose, I do have other coaches around that's helping me. Okay. So for the people who I don't choose, me and my coaches do get together and we figure out how, how we can get them involved. We don't just want to have any of our dancers sitting on the side because parents do pay their money, which is why they're probably mad that they can't be in the, okay. the limelight. Parents do pay their money, and I don't want anybody to feel like their money is wasted. So if they don't make the cut that first time, there's always other things that they can do. They can make performances. We'll always have performances. Um, if we have different events that we can go to, they can speak for, for the squad. Okay. We have things like banner. They can hold our banner. And